Hey everyone, welcome back to the Krusty Krab and in today's video we're going to be going over the checkbox component. Now this component in theory is supposed to be pretty simple. The documentation is a bit long and they go over some other form control components that we're briefly going to touch on but for the most part I want to show you guys in essence just the checkbox component and everything you can do with it and if you find value in this video as always help with the YouTube algorithm and leave a comment if you have any questions and if you want to learn more about React and Matil UI make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. So the checkbox component is very, very basic at the core of it. Essentially, it's just a checkbox, sort of like a radio that you would find in regular HTML. And you can see here that by default, there is no controlling of the actual input. So in React, you have controlled and uncontrolled input. Controlled input means you are passing in a variable that controls the value, and you're passing in an on change handler that controls what happens when the button is actually clicked, and it relies on you to actually change the checkbox's value. But by default, you can see here, if you were to just go ahead and you know use checkbox with nothing else in it, you can ignore all this label stuff that they have passed in here, you can see that all it will do is simply just be checked or unchecked depending on what the user is doing. You can see there's also a prop um, that you can pass in called default checked if you want the uncontrolled checkbox to by default be checked, but most of the time you'll probably be using a controlled input and you probably won't need to use this prop. Then of course you can pass in the checked which will automatically make it checked and um, you can pass in disable to make it so that the user can't click on that checkbox at all. Now let's talk about if you want to make a checkbox with a label. So if you want to make it a label you can use their form group component and this form group component is sort of found in a lot of different um, uh, material UI inputs and it sort of goes together with a bunch of other form um, components and you can see here if I were to click on the API for example for the form control API there are demos in a bunch of different inputs but I want to cover the form control and all the form stuff in a separate video so we're not going to worry about too much but all you should know is that you can make a form group and within that form uh, group you can create a form control label and on control all you have to do is pass in the input that you want in this case we want a checkbox that is checked by default and then you can put whatever label you actually want over there now before we move on to some of the more uh, uh, common um, props let's talk about the actual controlled um, version of the checkbox since that's probably what most people are going to use so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pass in the checked prop and that checked prop you're going to want to pass in a variable in this case they are using a simple state variable called checked and whenever that is true the checkbox will be checked and then the next thing they have is an on change handler. So this on change handler, where they call they pass in a function called handle on change, they're simply just like any other input in React, taking in the event, and then they are setting the checked state variable equal to event.target.checked, which essentially is just going to be true or false depending on uh, or not on whether they actually clicked on the button while it was checked or unchecked. And this is the basic default way to actually handle controlled inputs in Mato UI and React. And for the most part, your checkboxes, when you're doing them, um, if you're keeping track of whether or not someone has checked something in the state variable, will probably come from this. Now, of course, in some more complex use cases, you might have things like Redux um, hooked up into your React where the user is you know, maybe seeing a lot of different checkboxes and a lot of those will be pre-checked depending on a state variable from Redux and you can deal with that in certain ways as well. But just know that you will probably be using this checkbox component in a controlled manner um, as there's not really much use for uh, non-controlled checkbox manners that don't keep track because they don't they, they don't really keep track of the checkbox's state in any variable. So, you know, I assume if you have a checkbox in your application, you probably need to know whether it's checked or not. But if you don't, you can always use the unchecked uh, variation, which would just be you deleting these two props right here. So now that we understand how the controlled input works, we can go over some of the more common props. For example, the size prop, pretty self-explanatory. By default, the size is medium. If you set the size to small, it'll go ahead and be smaller, and I believe you can also set it to large. You can also pass in the SX prop, and this SX prop um, is one of the props that you can pass into any Matil UI component. I have a whole video that you can find in the description below if you want to learn more about it, but essentially you can use it to target uh, global CSS styles from Matil UI. So if we go to the checkbox documentation, 
uh, if you scroll down to class, CSS classes, you can see here that if you wanted to apply any CSS to the root of the checkbox, you could target this global CSS class called MUI checkbox root. And um, all they're doing in this example, let me uh, go back to it, is they are targeting it with a selector. And they're saying, yeah, so we want to make the font size 28 pixels. And that's just going to increase the actual size of the checkbox as a whole. If you didn't want to use the built-in size um, uh, the built-in size and it looks like the only things you can pass into size are small and medium so they don't have large so anything bigger uh, you would pass in a font size uh, just like they have here and target the uh, the actual root of the component itself so the next thing of course is color this is found on almost any Matil UI component this pretty much just pulls from the theme so for example the default theme color that all Matil UI pro uh, components have is sort of this blue and then the secondary color as it's called is sort of this purpley color so you can set color equal to secondary then success is green default is sort of this gray color and then error I believe um, is red but in this case what they're doing is they are once again um, passing in custom CSS uh, through the SX prop so they're saying you know for this color we're gonna pass in a, a pink that has an opacity or a hue of 800 and Material UI has their own built-in colors, and we'll talk about all this in the theme video as well. But just so you know, for this example, you can import specific colors and pass in hues as sort of array values for uh, those colors. So all they're doing is they're importing their own custom pink and saying, okay, when it's you know unchecked, uh, we are going to uh, have it be sort of this 800, the sort of darker pink. But when it is checked, we're going to overwrite the color to be 600, uh, 600, so it looks a bit brighter, um, and, and it just sort of gives some distinction. The next thing we're going to talk about uh, is passing in an icon. So this one I found pretty cool. You can actually pass in uh, in your checkbox an icon uh, in the icon prop and then a checked icon in the icon prop. So you can see here, um, if you remember from our Mirto UI icons video, which I'll also link below, um, you can import many different icons and each icon has different variants. So in this case, uh, for this first checkbox over here, the, the regular icon for being unchecked is just going to be a favorite, so a heart. Um, that is just the border uh, of it. And then when it's actually checked, they pass in just the favorite icon, uh, which um, will be filled in to whatever color you set. And you can also pass in a color here, like color equals secondary, if you wanted to make this, you know, like uh, purple, or you could even do the custom CSS to change the color of these icons over here. We talked about control. The uh, last thing to really talk about here is um, the intermediate. So for example, you can have some checkboxes that have intermediate states. So all you have to do is use the intermediate prop and if uh, you pass in a condition so in this case they have a state variable called check that keeps track of these two items that are below this parent item and the parent item will be fully checked if the first item in the checked is checked and the second item in the checked is checked however if um, you know the two items are different, so let's say one of them is checked and one of them is unchecked, or one of them the other one's checked and the other one's unchecked, then it will add the intermediate state, which by default shows a little line uh, through the middle of it, and that's sort of cool um, for a lot of different use cases. If you wanted some sort of intermediate state for a specific checkbox, and of course handle on change when you click this, it'll probably just if um, you know uh, it's intermediate or unchecked, it will make everything checked, and if it is checked. It'll simply just make everything not checked, just like that. So pretty cool. Um, the next example they have here is the form group where they talk about you know how to make it so that you have error handling and stuff like that. Don't worry too much about this in this video. If you really need to use an example like this now, um, and I don't have a video on form control groups and stuff like that, feel free to just copy uh, this code over and change it however you want. But essentially, it's sort of like all related to form controls and their form group components, which we'll go over in another video. Oh, and the other thing is if you have a label through the form control label, you can just pass in the label placement prop to either be start, bottom, end, or top, depending on where you want the label to show up. I think by default, it'll show up at end, so it'll always be to the right of it. And then of course, they just have some examples where they pass in some custom, and when I say some, I mean a lot of custom CSS to just make, you know, give you an example of what, you know, the component could look like if you were a CSS aficionado and you wanted to pass in a whole bunch of stuff into it. And that is pretty much it for the checkbox uh, component. It's a very basic one, a lot of use cases, and probably fi will find a place in your application depending on what you are building. And if you found value, make sure you leave a comment. It helps a lot with the algorithm. If you have a question or some recommendations on what you would want to learn in the future, let me know below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.